Welcome everyone to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. It is uh, Monday, August 28th. We have uh, several members of the Redevelopment Board joining us remotely who are ill this evening um, so that we can hold the hearing. So thank you for bearing with us as we changed rooms and um, tied in our, our folks remotely. So I'll just go ahead and introduce the members of the board, starting with myself. I'm Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair. Uh, Ken Lowe. So we have Ken joining us um, in person. And if uh, Steve and Jean, if you could introduce yourselves who are joining us remotely. Uh, Steve Revelock, good evening. Uh, Eugene Benson, thank you. Great, thank you. And we also have with us this evening the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker. Thank you, Claire, for joining us. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our first agenda item. Agenda item number one is the review of meeting minutes. We have two sets of meeting minutes to roll through uh, tonight. The first is uh, the set of meeting minutes from July 10th, 2023, and I will run through and see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Jean. Uh, no additions or corrections. Thank you, Steve. No additions or corrections. Ken? Uh, not this one, I don't think. Nope, not this one. Okay, great, thank you. And I have no additions or corrections either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 10th, 2023 as submitted? So motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank I'll you. I'll second. Thank you, Jean. We will uh, take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes from July 10th have been approved. We'll now move to the meeting minutes from July 24th, 2023. Uh, and I will again ask for any additions or corrections, starting with Jean. Uh, no additions or corrections. Thank you, Jean. Steve? Uh, no additions or corrections. And Kim? I think I had one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I can't seem to find it now. Page four. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to add. Uh, you have that one or no? I have it in front of me, yeah. Okay. It said, Mr. Lau replied that the dry lane would narrow, it would only eliminate parking. Uh, I meant, um, I, think, I think I was referring to uh, putting the street trees in the parking space, not in the landscaping strip along the sidewalk, which Jean was referring to at that time. So how would you like to edit this? So we're um, on the third paragraph from the bottom, Claire, on page four. Um, so planting them in the parking lane would narrow, would require narrowing the already narrow streets, which seems unlikely. Mr. Lau replied that the drive line wouldn't be narrowed. It would only eliminate parking. So I said that the, the street trees could be parked in the parking spaces, eliminating parking, but not narrowing the, the street or something along those lines. That's, that was one proposal. The trees would only eliminate parking. They would not narrow the drive line, is what you were? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no, I think uh, Gene was talking to narrowing the planting strip uh, along there and then uh, potentially narrowing Now in the street, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not saying no. Just move the tree right into the parking, if there is parking, and then leaving the, the driveway and the street alone. But that the buffer would need to be we built will, in yes. where there's current currently parking. Correct. Okay. Okay. Sorry, if that didn't make any. It still doesn't make much. But you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Yep. Buffer. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, is there any other correct additions or corrections? No. Great. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 24th, 2023, as amended? Uh, so motioned. I'll second. Thank you. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes from July 24th, 2023, have been approved. All right, let's now move to our second agenda item, which is the public hearing 
for docket number 3760-1306-1308, Massachusetts Avenue. Do we have the applicant with us this evening? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so for everyone joining us, what we will do this evening is we will um, provide the applicant with up to 10 minutes for any type of introductory uh, presentation that you would like to make. I'll then turn, um, turn it over to uh, Claire from the Department of Planning and Community Development who uh, might have an overview of information for us. We'll then uh, turn this over to the board for any uh, questions that they might have for you. We'll have some initial discussion. We'll open this up for public comment. And then uh, the board will uh, decide whether or not to take a vote this evening or if there's any additional information that's required. Okay. Uh, so with that, um, if I could invite um, the representative from the applicant uh, forward, the microphone's right here in front of us. You're more than welcome to make any presentation you would like. Um, and uh, Claire would be happy to, to pull up anything you might uh, want to see from the application on the screen as well. Okay, awesome. I'll do my best. <laughs> Sean, I need you to come help me do this presentation. I'm not seeing any screen. Uh, you can sh you, you can I try to help you? I, if you'd like, I've got Zoom here, but I can't access it. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've got Zoom here as well. Yeah, we'll have technical assistance. He'll, he'll be oh, here yeah. in, right. in a minute. Thank you. Um, I apologize. It's all right. No oh, there he is, right here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. Because I'm not able to click on the window that Jean is on. Ah, oh, there he is. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Excellent. What screen, what, um, what would you like me to start with? Just the plans? Just the plans. Okay. Yeah. You can do that. Screen sharing. Why isn't it showing? And it's even harder when everyone's waiting. I know. Sorry, I'm Claire. so sorry. No, it's not your I fault. We're, we're all using a new system this evening. Well, we're temporarily in this room, so I appreciate your patience. It will not cut into your time of presentation. No, no, it certainly <laughs> won't. It certainly won't. <laughs> uh, Sean, this still isn't working for me. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Madam Director, is it possible the document is one that is in one of the other tabs? Um, it's possible. So they can see this at home, but I can't see it up there on the screen. Oh, yes, it was two different screens. Uh, okay. There we go. Well, That'll do it. Fantastic. Well, we, uh, so I two screens. I can make a duplicate so whatever you see on this is up there. That would be great. Gotcha. That would be very useful. Thank you. Oh, just if there's any like kind of communication, that would be up there. Though. Okay. Oh, got it. Is that the plan you wanted to see? Uh, I believe it's missing some. <laughs> <laughs> this is from, it's not this. This is the same issue. It's a signage. You could just go to the first screen. Do you want us to look at the site plan or the floor plan at uh, A104? The floor plan. 
A104. A104? That's the floor plan. A, A104 is the floor plan. Yep, a little down. Yep, a little more. It's just the site plan. I don't know why it's not rendering. This is your complete application. I mean, I didn't do my presentation in the last. You can go ahead and get started. No, it's fine. Yeah, if you wanted to go ahead, um, yeah, please. We, we have it all um, electronically, so if, if you're okay with speaking to it while Claire tries to pull that up. Um, we can uh, go ahead. Okay. Sounds Great. Good. Thank you. So if you could just introduce yourself, that would be fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. So, hello. My name is Natalia Quirino. I'm the designer for the project at 1306-1308, Mass Ave. Here with me, we have the applicant, which is Ricardo Batista. Um, so, the proposed design consists of an uh, um, interior renovation for an existing retail space, where we're proposing a retail space as well, about 522 square feet, and also an office space. So just to clarify, uh, 1306 is currently an office space, and 1308 is a retail space. What we're doing is pretty much just switching positions. So 1306 we're proposing to be a retail space, and then 1308 would be the office space. So the office space would be for the RB Farina Roofing Company, which is a company that's been serving the neighborhood for the past four years. Um, so they just pretending to expand the office facility to better assist the community and also propose a showroom uh, for the customers. Uh, we're not proposing any change on the footprint of the building. No exterior work will be done, just a new sign for the RB Farina roofing. And no structure work will be done as well. So all the beams and columns will remain as existing. And it's just going to be interior partitions um, for office um, spaces. And the building will be ADA compliant, so we have uh, two ADA bathrooms and also two restrooms for the employees. Um, and I believe that's all. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm happy to. Yeah, here we go. So. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, Claire, did you have anything to um, uh, bring to the attention of the board regarding this application? Sure. So this is an application for a special permit um, for the board to review uh, and approve the change of use from retail to a commercial office of greater than 3,000 square feet in the B3 Village um, business. Um, there is some signage that is associated with this uh, project. We um, received a drawing that shows the dimension of the signs, um, but no uh, detail or section and no indication of whether or not the sign is going to be internally illuminated. So that would be um, you know, on, on the recommendation of the board, if that is a future, um, um, something you'd like to assign to staff or have the applicant come back to um, talk about the signage, um, we could do that. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that um, there are no parking um, spaces that are associated with the storefront, but that is typical. Um, they did not um, submit a parking plan, but, you know, I, I believe um, the parking that is available here is the public street. Um, a new office would require seven spaces with two short-term bike parking spaces, two long-term bike parking spaces. Um, I think the board um, may be interested in considering requiring some interior bike parking and or bike storage on the site, um, but that the public parking on Mass Ave um, and public um, uh, bike rack facilities right now um, are what is being proposed for, uh, for parking and bike parking. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. So we'll go ahead and uh, open this up to any uh, questions that the board might have for uh, you and your team. Great. We'll start with Ken. Um, do you guys own the building or are you guys renting the building and fitting it out? No, we are buying. You're buying the building? We actually got it yeah, this December. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just going to ask. I know that it's um, not convenient, but if when you're responding, if you wouldn't mind just coming up to the microphone so that we can pick that up, that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. Um, you guys probably know much better than I do, but you guys have like a moat in the backyard, uh, right behind the building where there's a retaining wall and uh, where, the, where, the, uh, where the landscape comes down. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, are you guys planning to fix that up at all or is, 
or what are your, what, what are your plans for that back space? Um, there's no real access mm -hmm. from anywhere. You can't get it from um, anywhere but through your building. So it's pretty much landlocked back there, but it's, it's, it's a huge eyesore or um, you know, insects um, grow in that uh, swampy area. I mean, you guys can clean it up and try to clear out the area drain or something like that, so it just becomes a little more uh, friendly to the neighborhood? Yeah, we're planning to clean it up, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We and just got, I mean, I was aware of this when we saw this, the, the site plan. They probably knew before, so we actually um, talk about this, probably just clean it up. And okay. Yeah. If it, any retaining wall, if we, I mean, I, we have also a structural engineer in the team, so if any retaining wall reinforcement is needed, we can also bring force as required. I think the retaining wall looks, yeah, I think the retaining yeah. wall looks fine. It's just uh, uh, the, the fact that it's all dilapidated. Mm -hmm. uh, there's chunks of brick down there. It's got to be at least a couple inches of mud down there and, mm -hmm. and just trash and debris. And the only way you get access to that is through your rear door. So I, I'm just hoping you guys, you know, be good neighbors and sort of clean that area up a little bit. And uh, you know, maybe cut. Yes, I would just say that we are more than happy to try some activity that can enhance the area, not just making sure that that is clean and looking good, but also trying to, we cannot do that in a back, but also making sure that we can um, support the city with some bikes because we have the area across close to us too, so we could have some. Um, some kind of encouragement for the community to have some bikes and things like that. Yes, answering. We would clean everything and make sure that that looks good. Okay. Um, Claire, can you pull up A104, uh, please? Yes. It's the floor plan, a little further up. Yes. Okay. If you look at that uh, floor plan there, where you have your um, marketing, your marketing suite right there. The showroom in the front? Nope. In the middle, the middle in the middle, there's uh, yeah. AW yes. marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It gives you a ceiling height there, but uh, but that room there, okay? There's actually a door there that you guys are infilling now. There's this, there's a, a door that exits out to the side. It goes to the driveway to the Citizens Bank. Do you guys have some sort of easement with them or somebody? Or you, or you guys plan to uh, get rid of that door and infill it with brick the way you've shown it here? Yeah, just, we were going to just infill it. I, I might make a suggestion saying if you do have some sort of eas easement back there uh, where you can use that as an access, uh, you might, I was going to suggest that maybe you can have uh, two bicycle parking there for long-term parking for your employees if they choose to, uh, to ride their bicycle uh, to, the, uh, to where they work. They don't have to drag it all the way through your uh, showroom space and everything else. They can sort of access from the side maybe. And then this way uh, you're encouraging um, some you know, possibility of employees uh, riding the bicycles when the weather's good. Um, that might be a suggestion. Then and if you can allocate some space inside. I know you have it extremely well, well laid out, mm -hmm. but if you can find some space for uh, uh, at least two bicycle parking there, that would be nice. Um, it, it, you know, and I think there might be access there. There's no other access besides the front door. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I'm not even sure how you guys are um, dealing with the two means of egress um, because the front door is one. Yeah. Uh, where's your second? Yeah, well, um, yeah, we have the back one. Um, the what? The back. Back door. Back door. It goes nowhere. It, it goes into, uh, you know what, you know what I mean when the back there, it's just a big mm -hmm. um, pit. Like a court. It, yeah, it's, court. it's an unmaintained courtyard, yes. basically. And there's no access. Uh, you have a retaining wall. When you first got out that door on the left, you got the building to your right. I think it's the back of um, the kitchen to the restaurant next door. And then you got the, the hill right behind you. So um, I'm not sure 
how you, you know get two means of egress out of that uh, out of that space there. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I know it's a little out of our preview. Mm -hmm. No, but it, it, it makes sense but again it, if it can solve two. It affects how you have this, the front here laid out. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. We could definitely keep that door the wing field. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a big deal. We well, I'm not sure you can't keep that door. That door is not a legal, not a. Uh, it's a pre-existing condition which you have as a door, mm -hmm. but it's not a three-foot door. It's uh, up on a. It has a curb to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you'll have to work that through with the building department. With the building department. Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm not so. saying it's our place to, to do that, but but if you have to put a second means egress, that means you have to put a rated quarter down the side somewhere and punch out with a door on one side or the other of, of, the, front, of the front of your building. Mm -hmm. And I think that would affect how this whole thing looks. You have a nice looking, what you've done there looks nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, in order to get a corridor in there, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Yeah, but that wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, we, we thought about actually have other options for the layout, and we, we thought about keeping the door. So I, that's something that I could, yeah. So the, in the retail space, be, you put a hallway along the back side of that, on the side of that retail space. So there'll be a hallway there, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you access the retail space from inside that little vestibule there, or something like that? Could it be. I think yeah. the retail space is small enough that it, it's a small no, space. But this whole space in these two means of regress. The whole, the larger space, but yeah. the small retail the space. Small space. Yeah, but then you bring the quarter right back there, <coughs> then that's your second means of egress to a two hour rated hallway. I, yeah, but again, the, that's not in our purview, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I, I think that there is okay with one. It yeah. The code how, review might let us just yes. have one for the retail space. Yes. Retail, yes, not yeah. a problem. It's, it's yes. below 500 square feet, it's nine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, that there, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, very pro this project. I, I've seen that storefront empty for the longest time, and uh, putting something there is good. And uh, you know, uh, the other thing I have is right now, um, I'm assuming all your work trucks park somewhere else, right? Where do the work trucks park right now? They have a parking lot in Malden. In Malden? Yes. Okay, so that's where they have all their stock, the ladders, this staging, and all the all the stuff there. So this is just administrative and showroom. Yeah, we do have our operation department working in Malding where we have our parking lot too. Our trucks are always there. What we have here is that the sales team, mm -hmm. usually in the end of the afternoon or sometime in the middle of the day, they need to stop by to get some material to deliver for customers or sample. And then they have been parking at David Street up there uh, after the Cambridge, the bank. This is what they do. Sometimes they do park in a mass ave just to pick up something quickly yeah. and then leave, but they don't really spend time in the office. Usually it's just the staff and management. Okay. This is how we are working. I see them park along Park Ave a lot on the hill. Yes, because we have eight, almost nine uh, sales yes. members, and then it's kind of switching every time it's one. Uh, that's all the comments I have for now. Okay, great. Thank you, yeah. Ken. Um, and thank you for your answers. So we'll uh, now turn it over to Jean for any uh, questions you might have. Yeah, thank you. And I also think it's a nice project. And um, my only questions relate, well, some of my questions relate to the bicycle parking. And that is, do you think you'll be able to fit two inside bicycle parking spaces into the office area. Yes, two bar two parking two parking space for bicycle. That's what you yeah. for bicycle. Yep. Yeah. And I think outside you don't you don't really have any of your own property outside, but maybe to be able to work with the town to see if there's a place to put an additional outside bicycle parking. Would that be okay? Yes, that's okay. that's okay. Great. For the for the retail space, do you have any prospects to rent it? No, we don't. Not at mm -hmm. the moment. Yeah. Do you expect to have any exterior lighting? I didn't see any. No, we're just no, doing no. just the sign. No lighting. No illuminated logo. Um, no. Okay. Um, 
Those were my only questions. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jean. Steve. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, likewise, I, I recognize this uh, particular storefront has been empty for quite a while, and I'm, I'm really happy to see, the, see, uh, see a new owner come in and, uh, and, and make an investment. Um, on the northeast corner of the property, uh, right next to, or right next to the northeast corner of the building, there is a blue uh, bicycle rack. Is that part of the property, and is that staying, or um, what is, what are, the, yeah, I guess, is that bike parking area part of the property, and what are the plans for it? Um, I believe you mentioned, right, that it's part of the, the property. We just plan it to keep it, correct? Mm -hmm. Just keep it, yeah. Okay, I, I think there's um, I think there uh, there's three or four spaces possibly there. I, I happen to know this because it is my favorite bike parking spot in the Heights. <laughs> but um, it's it's quite convenient. Um, but aside, uh, I do have one question about the sign. Um, you know, uh, Director Ricker mentioned it wasn't a, a complete sign package. Um, one thing to keep in mind. Uh, that may come into play is the there's sort of a vertical spacing requirement uh, for the sign in the sign band. Uh, you need 20% on top or 12 inches and 20% or 12 inches on the bottom, whichever is uh, less. Um, I don't know the width of that sign band, but um, you may, I'd just suggest, you know, maybe uh, consider centering it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's all I had. Okay, absolutely. Okay, great. great. Thank you, Steve. Um, so the only comment I had as well was um, about the sign. So um, I think I would feel comfortable with um, moving for an administrative approval, but one thing which would mean that you would need to submit signage details to the Department of Planning and Community Development for their review and approval as long as it falls within our guidelines in terms of the upper and lower spacing, the spacing from the sides and the actual si size of the sign, um, you know, the, the department can approve it. If you're looking for any relief, you would, we would need to reopen the special permit application and you would need to come before us again. One thing um, that I just want to point out as you're working through the details, I believe if I'm not mistaken that the, there's a slight pitch to that, mm -hmm. that roof. So, Again, that, I think that's one of the reasons why we would like to see the sign detail to understand, is this on a backer? Is this, are you standing this off? How are, how are you mounting this mm -hmm. so that it's easily legible? Um, and then I think too, even just in looking at um, the sign here, some of the black on that dark um, roofing material is, mm -hmm. is a little hard to read. And I would encourage you just to think about again, um, the legibility of the, of the sign Mm -hmm. As you are um, working through those final details, um, you know, a, a backer may actually wind up helping people to be able to, to read the sign or, you know, maybe think about whether, you know, again, just l taking a look on site at the black on that dark yeah, roofing yeah. color and whether or not um, that will project enough. Yeah, absolutely. I'll check. Okay. This. The rendering never shows really the reality, right? As yes. As you try. I know the rendering so. is always hard, so that's why I'm just yeah. you know, suggesting that that's something you take a look at before submitting the package to the department. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we make sure we just gonna we just make make sure we, we follow, follow all the guidance <laughs> for the sign, so that way we don't need to get any to special permit. Exactly. Yes. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Are there any other um, questions for the applicant from the board before I open this up for public comment? I see Steve shaking his head. No. No from Jean. Not this time? Okay, great. So at this time, um, I would ask any uh, member um, who is any member of the public who has joined us this evening, if you'd like to make a comment on this uh, hearing, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll close public comment for uh, this hearing, and I'll turn it back over to the board uh, to see if there are any uh, further questions. I think first what I'd like to do is... Um, summarize what I heard as potential uh, conditions to the approval of this um, uh, of this docket. So um, one would be to, uh, to uh, submit a complete sign package to the Department of Planning and Community Development for administrative approval, assuming um, 
you know, with the caveat that it meets the uh, requirements of the zoning, uh, the signage bylaw and the zoning bylaws. Um, the second is to include two interior bike parking um, spaces and uh, through the Department of Planning and Community Development, you can also uh, request our bike parking standards, mm -hmm. which have um, requirements for what type of, um, what type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, Steve? Rack, I guess. Um, yep. Yes. What type of interior bike racks are approved by, by the town? Mm -hmm. um, and the third was to work with the town to um, locate an exterior uh to, to see if you can locate an exterior bike parking uh, location. Um, and then the, the fourth really, I think, is covered by one of our typical conditions, which is, again, to work with the uh, building department for all required, um, uh, all required reviews, which would include the review of the location of that second means of egress. Uh, Kim. The backyard. Thank you. And the, the final condition would be to um, clean and maintain and ensure proper drainage uh, of the rear courtyard. Does that sound yeah. like what you would intend? Okay. Anything else, Ken, in terms of conditions? No. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Uh, and so what the board would also be do, doing at this point then is finding um, – that we uh, are in agreement with the um, with the change of use um, would would be our finding for this yes. for this hearing. Uh, well, we, uh, Madam Chair, we also need to waive the automobile parking requirements um, as part of this, Thank you, which I think we would all do, but it does need to be in the um, in the findings in, our, yes. in the you. findings and special permit. Excuse me. Um, I was a little unclear about the sign. We are not issuing a sign permit, as I understand. They need to go back and file the materials to get a sign permit with planning and community development, who will then decide if they can administratively approve it or if it will have to come back to the board. So I just wanted that clarification. Correct. That is that is the intent of the, of the condition. Okay. Yes. All right. I'd, I'd like to point out one other thing, and I'm not saying this to fault the applicant, but and because it's in all three of the applications today, if you look at the um, required submittal checklist on the second page. Um, I think it's on a different tab. That's okay. I'll, I'll just say what it is. There's a required submittal checklist. The second page has a checkbox that's not checked that says sustainable building and site design elements two parts of it, neither of which they did. Uh, the first part is the solar energy systems assessment in which they either have to do the assessment or give a detailed explanation of why the project meets an exemption. Because they didn't do it, I looked and I believe they meet an exemption for change of use, so I'm not gonna raise this as an issue, but I wanna just point this out that in the future, if people don't check off these boxes, they should be told that they're not going to be able to go forward um, with this. So uh, in this case, I don't think it matters because it's easy to figure out the exemption is a change of use. Okay. Thank you, Jean. That's um, it. Thank that's you. it. Okay, great. Um, and just to reiterate where we are um, – waiving the requirement for uh, parking on site that is relative to section 6.1.5 um, in the zoning bylaws for record. Great. Okay, Steve? Yes, Madam Chair, um, going back to the proposed list of conditions, um, 
the work, the applicant, the proposal that the applicant work with the town to find a place to provide bicycle parking. Yes. If I understood the applicant earlier, they oh, the property already has a like a bike a rack installed, and they were planning to keep it. Okay, great. So we will eliminate that condition. Uh, Steve, that rack is not theirs. The rack to the left uh, off the sidewalk. Yes. There's, there's a four bike parking rack. No, that's not. Only a portion of that is on their property. Uh, three of the park, three of the bike parking spaces are on the bank property. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure who owns that, but uh, when we approved uh, the restaurant, that bar up there, um, they fixed the bricks down there before it was all torn apart. Someone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. someone went and fixed all that brick, and it was not the owner, it was not the previous owner. So I want to make it clear that that four spaces there for the bicycle parking, which I think is a great space, it's, it's a great location, but it's not part of their property. My okay, and, well in that case I should uh, retract my suggestion. Thank you. Great, thank you Steve. You can see it on your site plan when you look at it. It's not uh, within your property. Okay, um, so again to re, uh, so, are there any other comments from the board before we make a motion for uh, approval? Okay, seeing none, um, I will ask if there is a motion to approve, excuse me, let me just pull up the docket number, approve docket number 3760, the application for 1306 to 1308 Massachusetts Avenue with the conditions as uh, previously stated, I'll recap those to include two interior bike, bicycle parking locations to work with the town to see if you can locate an exterior bike uh, parking rack on your property to, um, to uh, clean, maintain, and ensure proper drainage in the rear courtyard and to submit a full signage package to the Department of Planning and Community Development for review and approval. Uh, those would be the conditions, and we would find uh, that the um, Redevelopment Board approves the change of use and also is willing to waive the uh, on-site parking requirements due to the inability to create them on your site per Section 6.1.5 in the Zoning Bylaws. Is there a motion? So motion. Is there a second? Uh, Jean, we you're can't mute. hear you. I think you're muted, but I think I saw your mouth say I will Five smile. seconds. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. We'll take a roll call vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. And we really look forward to seeing uh, you take over that space. So thank you. All right. So that closes uh, the public hearing for docket number 3760, 1306 to 1308 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, we'll now move to public hearing, uh, the public hearing for docket number 3759, 355 Massachusetts Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, and as the applicants change places, um, I believe that you heard the um, order of, of business. We'll, we'll um, take this hearing in the, in the same um, in the same fashion, uh, so I would invite you if you could introduce yourself, and you'll have up to ten minutes for a presentation to the board. Sure. Hi, my name is Seth Morrissey. I'm an architect at Olson Lewis Architects, and I'm representing Dr. Sarah Courtney and Mr. Matthew Owens at, for their plans to renovate 355 Mass Ave. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Sarah Courtney currently runs her business out of the first floor, and she wishes to renovate the residential unit above to be her own residence for her young family. Um, <clears throat> there is no change of use. There, was a, there has been a business there for around 50 years on the first floor, and the bulk of this work is uh, mainly focused on the second and third floor. But in, doing, in making the spaces more livable for her young family and more safe, We've ended up renovating um, much of the exterior to meet today's um, standard of living and bring a more aesthetic 
pleasing look to the neighborhood. Um, if you could pull up the existing photos, I think that gives a good picture of you know, some of the issues that we were looking at with the existing site. So the building ha hasn't been, has been touched many times over the years. There's been various additions to the back, enclosing multiple porches, which have different levels and heights, which have caused um, much water, a lot of water damage to occur in the existing spaces. So the idea in the addition is to add some space to the second floor and clean up a lot of the roof lines on the rear of the building. Uh, <clears throat> we intend to keep the existing height of the, the main ridge the same, but extend the main ridge all the way through to the back of the building, simplifying the massing of the, of the site. I think if you go up to the elevations, we can... There's a colored one. Should be a 2.0. Please. Sorry. Nope. I think it's a 2.1. 2.1. Yep. yep. So that's page 24. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, page 23. So since we started renovating the, well, our plan, to, plan was to renovate the second and third floor, we ended up replacing, planning to replace the windows on the first floor to match the new windows. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we're replacing the vinyl siding with the new four inch clapboards, um, typical of the residential neighborhood surrounding it. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. There we go. Two. There we go. One more. Can we go up one more page? Yep. One more page? Please. Yeah, please. Okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> You're doing a great job. I'm waiting. For Maybe that's the PDF. Slow. Sorry. It is a big PDF. Adobe just changed its format, too, and it's been a little temperamental for me. Uh, I use Bluebeam. Oh. Bluebeam is better. <laughs> It took a while to get used to. Yeah. Let me try to just reopen this. You know, we can't see what's on the screen, but if you tell us the page number, I so, think we can do that. So, if you flip there through. There we go. Yeah, page uh, number 23, Gene. I have 96. Okay. Well, 23 of the individual oh, PDF. Okay. So, A2.1. Yes. Correct. Yeah, okay, I've got that. Great. Hold on. I'm totally frozen, Jean. You can That's okay. That's okay. I'm we fine. all have it. Okay. Have I hold up. So if you, yeah. I'll just I start as well. Just... I can just start to describe it. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll look on with Ken. Yep. So in drawing A, the mass ab elevation, we have added a uh, porch cover over the existing stone porch that is there. Um, just to add a little bit more character um, and make the entrance a little bit more inviting. Um, the main gable still is there, there, as you can see in the front, and we've just replaced the windows with more traditional double-hung windows as opposed to some of the larger window, windows that were there existing. Um, at all the bay windows, we are adding paneling under a paneling detail below. Um, just because it is a typical detail with uh, when you're dealing with like a hardy blank clapboard. Um, you'll see on the rear elevation that we are adding another covered porch too, which this will this will be the client's main access into our apartment. Um, again, creating a more inviting entrance to their existing space. Another sheet you want to attempt to get up? I think that's it. I mean, I think, you, you know, it's, we'll be adding dormers on the third floor just to help, you know, to give the client more space. Um, but overall, the goal was to simplify the structure um, and 
make it a little bit more appealing. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you Appreciate did a good it. job making it more appealing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very nice project. Appreciate it. Yes. So, Claire, I will turn it over for, to you for any comments you might have before we open it up to the board. Yes, great. Thank you. Um, this is a great project. Um, so this is an application by Matt DeMello of DeMello Fine uh, Building and Woodworking um, for a special permit um, under the jurisdiction of the ARB. Um, the applicant seeks approval of significant exterior renovation in addition of a co covered porch and mixed-use building on Massachusetts Avenue. Um, I think if there's anything that I wanted to point out to the board, again, it's uh, bike parking. There's none proposed as this is also a residence and the driveway for the building um, serves uh, the residents. Um, I, I'm not sure um, exactly how the driveway uh, also serves the business, but there is ample parking, again, on Massachusetts Avenue um, that, is, uh, that has been used successfully by this business for years. Um, I think uh, I, I think that's it. I think you know, um, with with respect to uh, Mr. Benson's comments um, earlier, um, we um, I, I did speak with with Seth a bit about solar. Um, I believe this roof is going to be solar ready, um, if not solar installed. I believe the owner is um, uh, taking a look um, at what it would cost to install solar, but that the roof that is going on um, could um, could certainly. Um, uh, could certainly handle it. Um, this is not a historic um, building, um, and the use has been in place since at least 1980. Um, you know, and in terms of, I think, any uh, efficiency or lead standards, obviously, um, it, looks, it looks like we'll be doing Ener Energy Star certified appliances, mechanical systems, um, et cetera. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. All right. And I'll turn it over to uh, the board for any questions, starting with Ken. I have none. It's a very nice project. I support it. Great. Thank you, Ken. Gene. Yeah, I don't have any questions other than one. I just wondered if she'd be, and I don't think we would require this, if she'd be interested in putting a bike rack somewhere there so her clients, customers, whatever she terms them who ride up on a bike have a place to lock their bike. We did discuss it a little bit, and the way the site now is, there's a kind of a small retaining wall. So you'd actually have to do a pretty decent amount of work to actually create that space. Um, and again, we would prefer not to have it in the back, in the driveway, because that is our residence. Um, and that's, I mean, we're open to it, but it's just, it seems like it would be more work than um, expected. Okay, thanks. Yep. Just asking. Yep. Great. Thank you, Jean. Steve? Uh, no questions, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. Um, so at this point, I'd, uh, I'll open this up for public comment. Anyone uh, who's joined us this evening, if you wish to speak, if you could raise your hand. All right. Seeing none, we will close public comment. And I will uh, turn this over to the board oh. to see if there is any additional discussion. Um, I'm not tracking any uh, special conditions at this point, but I will uh, start with Ken. None. Jean? None. Uh, Steve? None. Great. Is there a motion to, let me pull up the docket number. I had one more request. Please. Uh, um, so in doing the, this planning process, the client has actually moved out of okay. our business and hasn't been able to uh, work in the office. and. And we're looking to kind of fast track this a little bit more. So we're seeking approval for the wave, well, the wave of the 20 day appeal period as well. That, we can't I do don't that. think we can waive, unfortunately. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. Yep. So. Um, we told you in the past, sorry. Oh, please go ahead, Ken. You, you can uh, proceed at your risk. Proceed at your risk? Yes. Is that something the board would be willing to do? Well, that's not up to us. <laughs> okay. When we say proceed at your risk, yes. proceed at your risk. Uh, we're not going to punish you for it. it. All it is is if someone, a neighbor or something, would come up and want to say no. Right. And they can challenge you. you. But um, I've seen other projects do that. If they want to streamline it, they should proceed it at their own risk. Okay. 
So if I approach the building inspector and say that you guys are okay with us proceeding at risk? Well, I mean, no. The, I mean, you'd still have to pull a building permit. Yeah. So that we, you know, again, we had talked about the fact that you could pull a separate interior versus exterior permit. That's really the only thing that we can um, provide you the opportunity for. Mm. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so anything else? Nope, okay, it. great. So with that, is there a motion to approve uh, docket number 3759 for 3555 Massachusetts Avenue? So motioned. Is there a second? I'll, I'll, I'll second with the conditions that Claire had added to her memo. The usual conditions. Yes, the usual conditions, yes. Those, yes. Those, oh, thank you. No special conditions. No. Thank you. Right. Okay, um, so we'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Uh, Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. Docket number 3759 uh, has been approved and is now closed. Thank you. Thank yep. you. All right. Uh, we will now move on to agenda item number four, which is the public hearing for docket number 3752 uh, Calix Peak at 251 Summer Street. I don't believe we have anyone from the applicant here this evening. So Claire, I will turn this over to you. Thank you. Um, at 1035 this morning, I received an email from the proponent um, asking that this hearing be continued at least until October 2nd. Um, they asked for uh, potentially a meeting in um, September, but this board will be um, doing, at that point, um, will be occupied with public hearings related to fall town meeting and any um, zoning amendments that are suggested there. Um, so, um, at, at the discretion of the board, uh, if they'd wish to continue uh, the hearing to the second, um, that, is, uh, that is a request directly from the project um, proponent. Um, DPCD did write um, a memo uh, related to this project as proposed, um, which you have in front of you. Um, there have been um, some requests uh, from, the, um, from the property owner um, and, the, uh, and the project uh, applicant. Um, uh, requesting or at least asking um, the board if they would be willing to evaluate this project um, on its own merits on the Calix Peak side of the property versus the um, auto sales side of the property. Um, the property owner currently um, does not wish to make improvements on the side of the property that he will be using. Calix Peak intends to um, move forward with improvements that they have um, you know, designed and, and put in front of this board, um, even in the first hearing. Um, so a question I have is, would this, um, you know, in my speaking with Doug Heim, um, it is at the discretion of the board if they're willing to do this, if you're willing to, to evaluate this um, project um, in that way. Um, I, I will also point out um, that the project, uh, as, you know, as sort of proposed to be reviewed by the proponent um, has not been in front of the select board um, Health and Human Services or Arlington Police Department at this time. Um, the presentation that was made to those groups showed a single business um, in that building, um, Calix Peak, the cannabis dispensary without, you know, um, uh, co-location of the, of the auto sales. Um, it is... trying to think of how to say this. I think this project um, can be reviewed on its own merits. Um, certainly if the board is um, willing to evaluate a project on, on half the site, um, again, I think it's um, to the discretion of the board. And I would also like to point out, you know, this is, this is not anything that has gone in, back in front of the select board at this time. Thank you, Claire. Uh, just to clarify, the project that was reviewed and approved by the select board though, was the full development of the site. It showed the full development of the site with one business in the existing building. Okay, thank yes. you for that clarification. You're welcome. Okay, um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to the board for um, discussion. I think there are two points that we need to um, come to a consensus on. The first is over whether or not we feel that this needs to go back in front of the select board. Um, Health and Human Services and the APD uh, before we review it, um, whether or not we feel that the changes as proposed are substantial enough that it um, uh, needs to be re-reviewed in terms of the host agreement. Correct. 
status. And the second is whether if, if we decide that it does not need that, would we then um, be willing to, that we would, you know, be able to review it in its uh, altered state. Would we, would we then uh, be willing to, uh, to continue the hearing to October 2nd? So those are the two items that the board um, That's the correct, board Madam Chair. Yeah. Great, thank you. And we'll start with Ken. Uh, my opinion is uh, no, but uh, we would ask them to um, start over again because mm -hmm. there's, there's enough change to this project that uh, it need, they need to go back to the select board, the police department, public, uh, all, all the different agencies that you mentioned, Claire. Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services and establish that, come back with a new plan for us and then for us to review then. Um, with an understanding that they control that portion of the site that they're, uh, they're looking uh, to work on. Great, thank you, Ken. Gene. Um, I think that it's not our decision whether it needs to go back to the select board for a new community agreement or APD or to Health and Human Services. It's the decision of the select board, APD, and Health and Human Services. So I would want to know whether they need to review this again and whether they need a new um, um, community agreement or not. If all of them say that they're comfortable with this new proposal and they don't need to review it again, then I would be comfortable in reviewing a new proposal, but not the proposal that we've gotten up to this point, because it, I can't imagine what it's going to be like with um, the auto sales place on one side and, and the Calix Peak on the other. What are they going to do with the driveways, for example? So um, it, I, I would need to understand what that is. The other thing, um, which I was going to raise if they were here tonight, is we don't have in our record um, the traffic study. And therefore, we could not make a decision on a traffic study that only went to the select board. And that traffic study is a few years old now. And if anything, traffic has gotten worse as the pandemic has slowly wound down. And if, and I think it was based on only having the, the Calix Peak business there. So my opinion is we would need an entire new traffic study done based on um, the two businesses continuing to operate and current traffic conditions. Um, so that's the other thing that I would like um, to see also out of this. Great, thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, um, like Mr. Benson, I would defer to the Select Board, APD, and Health and Human Services whether they felt um, you know, a, a second review was necessary. Uh, if they did not, I would be okay with uh, reviewing the project on its merits. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, I believe that the question is, do we, a corollary question to that, because I, I also agree, I think that we should ask them to um, approach those three departments and, and confirm as to whether or not that should be, uh, will be required. Um, how, do we feel that the project has changed enough that rather than continue the hearing, we would like them to reapply? Because it is a substantially different project at this point. It is two businesses um, as opposed to uh, if, if they are granted the permission by those three um, bodies to continue on with the uh, original host agreement, um, would we want them to come in with a new um, New, new, completely new application. Correct. And I am leaning towards that for several of the reasons that Jean brought up, um, and you know, again, the fact that this this has significantly altered um, in terms of the application itself. So, okay. uh, Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I would just say, 
for them to go back. Come back when you're ready. Yeah. Yep. And if uh, if the boards say, uh, uh, you know, the, the original agreement was fine, then just process it through like you normally do it. But it's it's. But well, we uh, could close this hearing this evening. I like to close it. That's yes. that would be my suggestion to close it and have them resubmit. Great. Uh, once they get uh, approval from the, all the different boards, and go from there. Uh, and they, they've canceled this three times now. Yes. You know, I mean, this is the third. This is you know. <clears throat> Come back when it's a more formed project. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, Gene, your thoughts. Um, I could go either way. I could also just say if they want to put in a completely revised proposal under this current application, I would be fine with that too. Thank you, Gene. I'd go either direction. Steve? Uh, I'll agree with Mr. Lyle. <clears throat> okay. Um, so is there a, I think we would need to vote to would we uh, close this docket? To, well, do we have to? We could close it. Um. Actually, that's a good question. This is a this is a this sort of a technical question. Do does the applicant need to withdraw, or can we withdraw on the applicant's behalf? I'm not not entirely positive. We can, but I don't know for sure. I think the applicant would have, excuse me, this is, this is Claire Steve. I think the applicant would have to withdraw, and I'm happy to uh, convey that message to the applicant. Um, but I don't think that the board has to vote to continue the hearing. To close the hearing. Yep. Um, so I think what I'd like to see is if there is a motion from the board uh, to request that the applicant withdraw the the current application um, to approach the select board, the Arlington Police Department, and the Department of Health and Human Services to confirm whether a new community agreement would be required. And um, at the time when this project is ready to move forward in whatever shape <laughs> it winds up taking, that they reapply to the redevelopment board um, when their materials are fully compiled. I'm okay with that. That sounds good. Okay. Would you like to make that motion? So motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. I'm a yes as well. So we will um, continue this hearing by asking them to, they would have to formally withdraw, and at our next meeting we will accept uh, the withdrawal of the application. And if they don't withdraw, then... Um, then we will disapprove the, we will okay. take a motion to disapprove. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Claire. Um, let's see. And I think... Um, we would we need to give them a time frame um, in terms of getting on the select board schedule. Uh, they may be able to get an administrative ruling on this, but in case they need to go in front of the select board again, I think we would give them until that October 2nd meeting to withdraw, okay. to formally withdraw. Okay. So that uh, continues. Agenda item number four, and we will now move to agenda number five, uh, open forum. Please. So you'll, uh, if you could please introduce yourself first, last name, um, and address, and uh, you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. Thank you. Jim Darty, uh, 68 Brentwood Road, Arlington. Um, I feel like it's uh, in a birthday in many respects. It's uh, three years ago. Um, about uh, 10 days ago when um, the board uh, granted permission um, to approve the hotel, the Lexington Hotel. Um, as you know, the hearing started prior to COVID and um, based on the date I just gave you, I'm sure everybody realizes it was during COVID. 
uh, hospitality industry was greatly impacted, uh, probably arguably more than any, anyone else. Needless to say, um, painting a picture for you basically that I would, um, I've been attempting to reach out to the planning um, department. I last spoke with Kelly um, on the matter back in April or so, and I've had some email correspondence and other voicemails, et cetera. Um, and haven't had much dialogue um, come back, so I was hoping um, that we could put it on the agenda if it's uh, uh, the desire of the board um, to discuss that matter at a date. Um, the appeal um, commenced on September 15th of 2000, and the decision um, was sometime in early December. So um, the preference, obviously, when I first spoke to Kelly about this was to do it prior to September. Um, not sure that's in the cards right now, quite frankly, because I don't know when your next meeting is, uh, if it would be prior to that. Um, but again, I didn't come. I understand what um, public forum is. I didn't come here. You don't have to respond. Um, and um, not looking to have it. So I hope I didn't go to my three minutes, but that's really all I wanted to um, get across. And if you do have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, if um, you could put us on the agenda, that would be great. great. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. And just so that you know, um, I have been on vacation the last two weeks, and Claire and I did speak about this earlier today. I just returned today. Great. And um, the, the intent is to put you on um, probably October 2nd. Second. Right. That agenda, once we get through the September hearings, um, for a hearing about um, your request for a continuance, uh, a continuation of the yeah. approval. Yep. Yes. Great. great. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Your Thank you so much. Hope you had a great vacation. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Oh, you guys were ever big brothers. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you so night. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, seeing no one else, we will go ahead and uh, close. Uh, open forum for this evening and move to agenda item number six, which is new business. And I will turn it over to Claire to see if you have anything for us this evening. Thank you. Um, the only new business I'd like to bring up this evening are updated uh, guidelines that we received, I think it was uh, about 10 days ago now, um, from the state regarding MBTA communities um, with some um, um, new regulations as they relate to commercial development. And um, the chair of the MBTA working group um, and I are developing a memo um, in response to these updated guidelines. Um, we think that the work that we have done with the zoning um, so far is, is solid. Um, we think that the bonuses and incentives that we have put in place for commercial development are honestly go further um, than updated MBTA uh, communities guidelines, which are only recommending 30% um, commercial on the first floor. I think, believe we are recommending up to 80% um, on the first floor uh, commercial development. Um, and the fact that we have stayed out of um, all commercial zones in town, um, you know, really, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily impact us that we would uh, need a regulation that would, um, you know, uh, allow for commercial to remain um, in a development um, in a commercial zone. Um, we simply did not do the project um, that way. Um, so while this is um, an interesting update um, and um, guidelines that have come in, I, you know, pretty late in the game um, for the communities with the heavy rail or with the rapid transit um, in them, such as Newton and Brookline, who I believe were advocating for this change, um, this is really not um, something that, that has uh, impacted the work that we've done in, in Arlington. Um, we are, we are, it is contextually different. Um, and we think the work of the, the, the work that the working group has done, that the ARB has done, and that the public has done at this point in Arlington um, will uh, serve to uh, incentivize commercial development as it is. Um, so although I don't have a memo for the board tonight, um, Sanjay, uh, the, the working group chair and I are putting a, a memo together for the working group tomorrow, which I will distribute. Um, and I wanted to, uh, this evening at least, um, you know, acknowledge uh, that those uh, guidelines have been updated two days after we took our, our final vote as a, as a working group, but I think I would be remiss to let it go sort of undiscussed and, and unacknowledged. So. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions for Claire uh, about that update, starting with Ken? No. Jean? 
Uh, yes, thanks. Um, I think the problem for me and maybe for Rachel is, I mean, I was gone out of the country for a week and saw the guidelines. I think just before I left the revised guidelines on commercial and, and my initial thought, which I hadn't sort of thought about since I was in London or since I got back, was that they weren't going to be very helpful for us and that we could probably do it better than they were doing. Um, but again, I haven't seen the latest map. I haven't seen all of the detail that probably Ken and Steve have seen and you have seen, Claire. So I don't really have any context in which to judge what you said. My thinking up to this point has been with the incentives for commercial on the ground floor that we um, have the MBTA community zone where we're doing the site plan review. But if someone hopefully wants the two extra floors and getting rid of the first floor setback, they go into special permit review, which I believe that we can do because um, the mixed use isn't required by um, um, MBTA community guidance. And it sort of seems to me it would be a better way to do it than to create um, a site plan review, which does not give us as much authority and leeway as, as putting it into special permit review. So that was my thought about how to do it. And I haven't had the chance to say that to anyone until now. Um, and I think it's worth having said some conversation about bifurcating um, that way. So Gina, and if, we do, and if we do that, then I think that's a lot better than what my initial read of the new guidelines led me to believe. So Gene, what, what I'm hearing is that if, the, if someone were to opt into the bonuses, then it would become a special permit. Yep, they'd opt back into the special permit process. Okay. Yep. Because they're gonna get a review from us in either case, so we might as well have our better review. Right, right. With the criteria that are in um, the ZBL right now. Great, thank you, Gene, for that feedback. Uh, Steve, did you have any feedback for Claire? Yeah. Um, with regards to the new guidance, I think I don't think it's necessary for for us to adopt it. Um, I think our the decision to go with bonuses to encourage ground floor commercial um, will work just fine. And it's there's not. I, because we're not using any parcels in the business or industrial districts, I, I don't see a strong need to mandate its inclusion. Um, <clears throat> Great. Sorry about that. Um, Mr. Benson's suggestion is intriguing and I will have to give it some thought uh, tomorrow night before tomorrow, our meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, well, when, Either that or we'll all have to discuss it if it doesn't come back from the working group that way. Yeah, I, I, do, think it, I do think that makes sense. Um, you know, because that is a, you know, we, I, I, think, I think that it's, it's an interesting idea. I think it works. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I like it, but I wanna sleep on it a little right. bit. Understood. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna say what, the, uh, the working group will probably think, because I've been working with them for a while, and they're, and, and they're thinking that they're using this uh, as of right, uh, and the bonuses would be as of right. And you're saying now that if you want to take any bonuses, you have to go back into the special permit, which, which then has a chance of not getting approval. So the encouragement to take these bonuses are not as high uh, because 
yes, we're, we're making MBT communities is as of right to do housing in these areas, but if they want to take advantage of any of the bonuses, then... Well, let me just say, it's, I could be persuaded otherwise, but at the moment, you probably would not have my vote um, if it was as of right without a significant special permit review by us. That's just my feeling at the moment. But I'll have to sleep on it the same way Steve will have to sleep. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying one way or the other either. I think, I think, again, I, I, don't, I don't want to get into, you know, a discussion of, of this particular, since this wasn't on the, the agenda, but I do um, think that it is important for us to see, Gene, what is being proposed for site plan review to, to understand, because we haven't seen that, right, in terms of what, what the standards are, what um, what the teeth are are it's within that. So, agree, that but it can't be as, as significant and as far-reaching as the Understood. special permit Understood. criteria. Understood. But I think that that is part of the review is to understand what is being proposed. Um, to that end. The other item of, did you have another item of new business? No. So the Actually, other item. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, before we move on, um, may I ask a clarifying question of Mr. Benson? Yes. Uh, so Mr. Benson, we had, the working group had been discussing three different bonuses. One for the inclusion of ground floor commercial, one for the inclusion of additional affordable units, and one for a, uh, a project that could, was certifiable as sites gold. Would you, were you thinking in terms of having a special permit requirement for all three of those or only the uh, ground floor commercial mixed use uh, bonus? Well, I think that's a big question about whether we as a board like all those three incentives and wanted to, would want to put them all into the same package. Now, you know, I haven't seen this, but I heard through the grapevine, and maybe the grapevine was wrong or inaccurate, that we're not actually requiring site certification or even certifiable, but some um, lesser site standard than real sites. If that were indeed the case, I would be really, really concerned that we took a product that took years of the Green Building Council to come up with and started stripping things out of it and still give people credit for it. So if that's, if it's like sites less, I'm not so happy with it. But again, this is just what I heard through the grapevine that had me concerned. But the answer, Steve, is, yeah, I would probably be okay with site plan review if it was for affordable housing. Um, I'd have to understand what the incentives are to say for sure. Yeah, we really need to see the full package, basically. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that brings me to our, our next item. Um, so our agenda on September 11th is to um, review the full MBTA communities package. Is that that's correct? Correct, Claire. That's correct. So one of the challenges we are going to have in terms of timing is that is also the day that the warrant opens and closes. So. We have several articles outside of MBTA communities that the board has already reviewed and voted on and put onto the spring town meeting, which was, will then just push right into to fall. Um, those can easily be, um, can be moved onto, onto the warrant. And I'll just, for the record, um, review what those are. Those are to modify requirements for landscaped and usable open space in the business districts, reduction of rear yard setbacks in business districts, clarify and adjust step back requirements in business districts, eliminate or reduce the reduced height buffer area, uh, modify the corner lot requirements and adjust height and story minimums in the business districts and add a minimum height requirement. 
Those are the um, warrant articles that we had previously voted on for springtime meeting and pushed to the fall. Madam Chair, wasn't there yes. also one about step backs? I guess, yes. clarify and adjust step back. If I didn't read okay. that, I apologize. That is- I might yes. have missed it. Sorry. That's okay. I read them quickly. Uh, so yes, step backs are included in that. So in addition to that, we will need language around the MBTA community's zoning proposal, which will be broad um, because it will encompass multiple sections of the zoning code and in, and in fact create an overlay. Yes. Um, within that, Claire, if I understand correctly, the site plan review process will be included? That's correct. Currently as written, the board will use the, the EDR process, uh, the, the process that you currently enjoy as a non-discretionary um, review, review process, a site plan review. Um, so uh, there was a, a package that was sent to um, EOHLC, um, which is the successor, I think, to EOHED um, for pre-adoption review. Um, that went in at the beginning of last week. I'm happy to share that package uh, with the board. Obviously, we, we, we can't deliberate um, on it, um, but you know, I think certainly as For an FYI, reference. I'm happy to send that along. I think that would be helpful to, to, to see ahead of, well ahead of that meeting. But that meeting, could, sure. That would be great. So um, without having the opportunity so the warrant on September 11th opens and closes before our meeting that evening. So what we would need to do is to ensure that we are comfortable and I'm happy to work together with Claire and if we decide it's, it's Jean, you know, two of us can work together to ensure that the language is written such that we do not need to review and vote as a board on the actual warrant language for, again, not the entire, um, not all of the language, basically just the heading for the, the, the warrant. That is, that is what needs to um, be included and obviously the full language of the article is what we will review um, starting on September 11th with the hearing process that will run through September on all of these actually. Um, the others that we had identified we're rezoning the St. Camilla's parcel, which I don't believe we are in a position, Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, to move forward with at this point. That is correct. So we will take that off from um, fall, and if we decide to pursue that for spring, that's when we will look at that one. The other one is a pr pretty simple one, which again, we've been speaking about for multiple meetings now, which is to remove single and duplex slash two family by right in the business districts. It's a simple article that uh, needs to be written and adding street tree requirements for every 25 feet of street frontage for all developments. Again, this does not mean that we are, if we submit these, that we are in any way beholden to move these forward post hearing, um, but we need to get these onto the docket, um, unfortunately, before our meeting that, that evening. So what I would like to propose is that I work together with Claire and um, perhaps Jean, although Ken and Steve, um, we could certainly submit and have you, um, we could uh, have Claire or myself collate feedback um, and make sure that the language is submitted during the warrant, open warrant article period. Um, and again, this would not affect our hearing process. We would still have full hearings and still need to fully develop the actual warrant article uh, language for the full article. So I wanted to um, get people's thoughts on that as a procedural procedural um, item of new business. Ken. I'm okay with you and uh, Claire doing this. Okay. I just don't have a bandwidth right now. Totally understand. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. Okay. Jean? Yeah, I, I just like to review them before um, they are submitted. I and, welcome that, yes. And the ones that um, <clears throat> you mentioned other than MBTA communities, I think are doable. 
Yes. And um, are, should not be very complicated. Correct. I, I am very concerned about MBTA communities, though. Because, and the wording for that, yes. And okay. the wording for that, because we have, over the six plus years I have been on this board, boxed ourselves in more than once yes. by not putting the right wording into the warrant article where we then couldn't do what we wanted to do or had to try to jerry-rig mm. um, what we wanted to do. And since neither Claire nor I have seen or participated in what the proposal will be from the MBTA Communities Working Group, we don't know whether we'll like it. What I've heard through the grapevine and what I looked at when I saw um, the map on the website this morning is that at least some of the recommendations that Claire and I made Ra when you we mean, did... You, sorry, just for record, you mean Rachel. I mean Rachel, yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. That Rachel, <laughs> Rachel and I made. I'm not sure if it's COVID or jet lag that's having me do that. It's on, I understand, Jean. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> Thank you. Um, seems not to have made it into these proposals. Um, so um, I don't know where we're going to be on those things. So I, I, it would be great if we could write it both broad enough so that we can make changes to the proposal from the working group if we determine that it's appropriate to do so and that, you know, it does include things that would allow us to do things that the working group maybe hasn't talked about. So that's Agreed. my concern about it. Agreed. Thank you, Gene. Steve? Um, I am fine. I'm completely comfortable with um, delegating the warrant drafting to uh, the chair, to Mr. Vinson, and to Ms. Ritter. Great. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that, um, and we will, uh, Claire and I will uh, touch base with, with Steve again. Three quarters of this is complete. It is really those two minor um, clarifications and then the more complex wording of the MBTA community's um, zoning overlay right. district, which again, we can um, have an offline discussion about and move that forward. And I should mention, I, I emailed both of you the other day about uh, a, a minor change to a lettering in one of the uh, zoning bylaw sections that we should have done last year when we changed something else, but we didn't. So the reference is to the wrong section now, and I think we can put that in this time too. Thank you, Jean. I am still waiting through my email from being out, yeah. so I will uh, look for that today. I yeah, will it's, also it's a very simple one. Great, thank you. I will also just mention that there were two, um, one fairly administrative, one, I'm not sure if it's quite as administrative, um, requests from the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, and I asked them if they would be willing to hold those for Springtown meeting, and they seemed amenable to, to that. So um, we will have a few um, articles from the Zoning Board of Appeals to discuss for, for Springtown meeting, just as an FYI. Uh, any other items of new business, starting with Claire, Ken, Jean? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody who's been working on MBTA communities because it's been a long, I can see, drawn-out process in which you get brickbats thrown at you fairly regularly. And, um, you know, I'm getting, and I'm sure the rest of you are getting lots of emails from people, some of which are heartfelt and some of which are heartfelt but are based on a lot of misinformation. So I just want to thank everybody here and everybody else on the committee who's been working so hard. Great, thank you, Jean. I'd also like to extend that to all of the members of the public who have attended the meetings and provided feedback, um, and to all of those who are continuing to provide um, written feedback as well. It's very helpful. Uh, Steve, any other items of new business? 
Uh, no new business from me, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. Um, Claire, actually, did you want to mention the postcard which went out? Yes, thank you. And in fact, it was, it's, it's funny. I was just thinking of it. <clears throat> so we. I'm now telepathic. That's, yeah. It's happening. <laughs> it's, it is. Um, the, um, excuse me, the community outreach uh, section of the MBTA community's working group um, has uh, worked very hard to put together a postcard um, with QR code that will send folks to the MBTA community's uh, webpage, which of course has all of our information and our iterative work. Um, on it. Um, this postcard went out, is, uh, went out in a bulk mailing this afternoon. Um, it encourages folks to uh, provide comment at the uh, September 11th hearing um, and then to continue to um, provide comment and advocate uh, for MBTA communities um, as, as they can through the process before town meeting. Um, so this is a, a full town mailing. Um, it will go out to, um, like I said, it went out, it, it went out today. Um, I had a conversation with Rachel uh, about it this morning um, as I, I also booked um, town hall uh, for your September 11th meeting because we will be expecting quite a few people um, uh, to be there for that. Um, so postcard mailing today out to the full town. Obviously, uh, clearly uh, legal notice will go, legal notice is going out to about 4,500 um, uh, uh, homes um, also uh, uh, this week uh, as, as is required. Um, so we do think that we have our bases covered in terms of um, town um, notification. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we, will, we will move on from here. Um, um, excuse me, what happens if we, when it gets to the redevelopment board, it adjusts the map, will we then send out cards or letters to, to property owners who weren't done before? So this is, we required to, we did, um, we notified everybody who is under the potential overlay as well as those who extend um, 300 feet from the edge of the overlay. I am not anticipating changes to the map that are so significant that we would need to notify a new group of of property owners. Um, okay. If we do, then we'll have to do that. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thank you, Jean. Uh, any other uh, questions uh, for Claire regarding the mailing, Ken? No. Steve? No. Uh, no. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other new business? No. All right. Great. Seeing none, I will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. So much. Feel better.